All right, we're going to go through some of the chapter 23 homework. All right, we're going to start with the uh, 23-26, uh, which has a couple of esters that we need to name. So when we are naming our esters, uh, we name the group coming off the oxygen first. All right, so this is methyl. And this side is ethyl. So sometimes that's enough. If you know that much, you can get the answer to a multiple choice question, right? All right, so this one's going to start with methyl because that's coming off the O. This one's going to start with ethyl because that's coming off of the O. Uh, then you name the rest as a deprotonated carboxylic acid. So three carbons would be propanoic acid. When you take the H off, your ic acid becomes A-T-E. So this is methyl propanoate. This has two carbons, and so this would be ethanoic acid. And when we take the H off of the ic acid, it came from the 8, and so this is ethyl ethanoate. All right, and so that is how you name your esters. Uh, you have to name the group coming off of the O, and then you name the rest as a uh, deprotonated carboxylic acid. All right, 2328 uh, gave this um, detailed structural formula showing every single bond. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to put it in a condensed structural formula, uh, and then we're also going to name it. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do the condensed structural formula. One way, the way you would see it on the test, is you're going to see it as CH3 sub 2. All right, and that's these two CH3s. And then that's connected to a CH, which is connected to a CH2, which is connected to another CH2, which is connected to a CH3. All right, and so that's how you will see the condensed structural formula. So it's pretty easy to go from a detailed structural formula to condensed. Uh, the harder part is going from the condensed structural formula to the detailed structural formula and then being able to name it. So when you name it, you got to find the longest carbon chain. And in this case, it is five. So that is a pentane. But off of carbon number two, you have a methyl. So this is a two methyl pentane. All right, so you have your structural formula showing all the bonds. You have your condensed structural formula that does not show all of the bonds, uh, but it does show how the thing is connected. And then you have your name, two methyl pentane. All right, on 2330, it asks, uh, if it's possible for these alkenes to have uh, cis and trans. When you're looking for cis and trans, all right, you look at the double bond. In order to have cis and trans, you have to have different things on both sides. All right, so you have to have a different thing here than here. You have to have a different thing here than here. If you have that, then you can have cis and trans. So you have to see of your carbon-carbon double bond here that one of those is an isopropyl group. The other is a hydrogen. That's different. On the other side, one is a hydrogen. One is a CH3. That is different. And so, yes, this one can have cis and trans. When you look over here, you have a CH3 and another exactly the same thing, CH3. These are the same. And anytime one side has the same group, then there are no cis and trans. All right. The other side would have been fine because you have a hydrogen and you have an ethyl. But if one side or if both sides have the same group, you cannot have cis and trans isomers. All right. So if we were to uh, draw this one out as one of the isomers, CH3, CH, 
CH3 that's connected to the C double bond C if we put an H here and we put an H here and then a CH3. All right, we could name this. Now, when you name your alkenes, you have to go from the end that is closest to the double bond because you always have to have the lowest number for the first carbon of the double bond. And so five is our longest carbon chain and the alkene will start at carbon two. And so this is a two pantene, all right? However, off of carbon four, we have a methyl. So this is a four methyl to pantene. But this has hydrogens that are on the same side of your double bond. And so this is a cis. 4 methyl 2 pentene. Uh, and all you have to do is, is put this H or this H. One of these H's has to go up, and then you would have a trans 4 methyl 2 pentene. Uh, the name of the other one here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, and so here we have again a 2 pentene. But now our methyl group is also on carbon 2. So this is a 2-methyl 2-pentene. And we cannot have cis and trans because this carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond has the same group on it, methyl and methyl. All right, complete and balance your reaction. So your uh, alkanes, I know this is an alkane because it has the formula CnH 2n plus 2. So this is an alkane. So alkanes, uh, we do two reactions with them. We burn them all the time for heat. Uh, and we also use them in organic synthesis. They do substitution reactions. All right, so this is a complete combustion. When you're adding oxygen, you are burning this alkane. And so when you burn your alkane, you get carbon dioxide and water. So to balance it, when you have four carbons on the left, you have to have four CO2s on the right. If you have 10 H's on the left, you have to have five H2O's on the right. And now you're ready to balance your oxygens. You have eight of them from your four CO2s. You got five more from your five H2Os. So you have 13 oxygens on the right. And to balance that, you need 13 halves or six and a half O2s. All right, if it says that you do not give fractions, well, then you multiply through by two. And so your coefficients would then be a two, a 13, an eight, and a 10. If it doesn't say anything about fractions, you can leave it with the 1, 13 halves, 4, and 5. All right. Uh, the next one is when you add an oxidizing agent. So MnO4 minus is a strong oxidizing agent. All right, and what that does to a, an alkene is it puts two OHs on there. And so the definition of oxidation here is the addition of oxygen. So if we look at the molecular formula, that is a C6H8. So 2, 4, 6, 8, no, 10. 10, all right, so you can add them up. You got 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You have those H's because all carbons have to have four bonds. So you have your C6H10. All right, and then over here, you still have C6. Let's count our H's. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We got H12, and then we have O2. All right, so this one is harder to tell because we added both hydrogen and oxygen. 
Now, when you add water, there's no change in the oxidation. So if you added, uh, for every two H's, you added an O, that is neutral, and that did not oxidize or reduce. Uh, here, you see that we added, from our molecular formula here, we added two H's because we went from 10 to 12, and we went from zero oxygens to two oxygens. So the net effect was the H2O did nothing. We added an oxygen, so it has been oxidized. All right, and we can tell that by uh, doing our oxidation numbers. All right, so nothing happened right here. So this is unchanged. This did not change at all. The only thing that changed was at the double bond because that's the functional group and that's where reactions occur. All right, and so if we look at our carbon here and here, we know that when we count our oxidation numbers, hydrogen is always a plus one in our oxidations. So H is going to be a plus one. All right, and so carbon to carbon is nothing. We have zero oxidation for a carbon to a carbon. All right, and so since the hydrogen is attached to this carbon, that carbon is a minus one carbon. Same over here, we got a plus one for our hydrogens. And so this carbon is minus one. If we go over on this side, all right, so we have an H, which is a plus one. We have O that's minus one and H that's plus one. So when you add it together, your OH is a minus one for the oxidation, your OH is a minus one, your H is a plus one. So now we have zeros for both of those carbons. You have a plus one, you have a minus one. And so our oxidation for the carbon went from a minus one up to a zero. And so that is an oxidation half reaction. All right, and so you went from a minus one oxidation to a zero. For your MN, we have our minus eight for our eight for our four oxygens, and so this Mn is plus seven. Here we got minus four for the two oxygens, it's neutral, so that's plus four. So when we go from a uh, seven, reduced down to a four, this is our reduction half reaction. All right, and when we look at our electrons, this one required uh, the loss of two electrons per our compound, so minus two electrons per one compound. Uh, this one required the gain of three electrons per MnO4. And so our common factor is six, and so you would put a three in front of these organic compounds. You would put a two in front of the MnO4 minus and the MnO2s. We are in base, and so we have a minus two on the left, and on the right, we would need a minus two. Uh, then you balance your hydrogens and oxygens. On this side, we have, we'll do the oxygens. We got eight oxygens. On this side, we've got our four, five, six, seven, eight. We have our eight oxygens on this side. No, we don't. We have eight on this side, we have six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 oxygens on that side. That's six of them, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 oxygens. Good grief, I can't count. So that's four, five, and that's three times two. That's six plus two, you got 12. So we need four H2Os on this side. And now it is a balanced chemical reaction. All right. Well, I did all that to tell you, you do not need to balance that oxidation reduction. That's how you would balance the oxidation reduction. What you need to know is when you oxidize a alkene with a MnO4 minus, you get two OHs where the double bond used to be. All right, so you need to know that when you have an alkene and they say add MnO4 minus, you get alcohols on both of those carbons. That's what you need to know. You do not need to balance it. All right.
For the next one, we're adding HBr and we're adding it to an alkene. And this is going to go by the Markovnikov rules. And that states that the H is going to go to the side to the carbon that has the most bonds to H's. And so this carbon has two H's on it. This carbon only has one H on it. It has a methyl. Methyl is not three H's. Methyl is methyl. H is H. This carbon on the left here has one bond to H. This carbon on the right has two bonds to H. So this H is going to go to the side that has the most H's, which is two H's. And so when you add your HBr, you're going to have CH3, then you're going to have CH, and then you're going to have CH2. All right, so the H of your HBr is going to go to the carbon that has the most H's, which is two, and the Br is going to go to the carbon with the fewer H's, in this case, one, uh, and you have your product. So that is the product of the Markovnikov addition for HBr. H goes to the side with the most H's. I didn't finish that question. So this one has uh, an ethyl, and then on bottom it's got an NO2. In order to add an NO2, we're going to use nitric acid. All right, and so that's going to be an HNO3. To write the Lewis structure of HNO3, you've got a double bond O, you've got a single bond O, and you've got an OH. Formal charges plus for the nitrogen, minus for a single bond oxygen. All right, and so when you're doing a reaction with a benzene ring, you have an aromatic hydrocarbon. And so this aromatic hydrocarbon will do a substitution reaction. And so we're going to lasso. And so when you lasso, normally you're going to lasso your water. And in this case, we're going to lasso water. All right, won't let go. All right, so when we lasso water, we have the H of our benzene ring, and we have the OH of our H of the benzene ring and the OH of your nitric acid. And what's left is your NO2. And then another product that you get is H2O. All right, so water is not a concern for the product because we are looking for the organic product. All right, and so we started with an ethyl benzene. All right, so that's what the reactant was, ethyl benzene. And so now we have a, uh, you can use numbers, you can use letters. Uh, you got a P nitro. So we have our ethyl benzene. We added our nitric acid, HNO3. That requires a catalyst, H2SO4, which we put over the arrow. And now we have a nitro group. in the pair position. So this is P nitro ethyl benzene or four nitro ethyl benzene. So when you have the one and four positions, that is a para, or you can use the numbers of four nitro ethyl benzene. All right, and then the next one is another lasso 
of a small molecule because we're doing a substitution on benzene. I'm going to show one of the H's. There are six of them. Uh, we're going to react that with Cl2. So write ClCl. We're going to lasso HCl. So again, lassoing HCl, HBr, and H2O are very, very common ways to quickly get to the correct answer. All right, and so now instead of a hydrogen on there, it has been substituted with a chlorine, and you get HCl, of course. This is your organic product, and this is chlorobenzene. All right, so you started with benzene, you did a substitution reaction, and now you have chlorobenzene. All right. So on 23.34, write an equation for the possible substitution reaction of butane with Cl2. All right, so butane, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. That is butane with Cl, Cl, or Cl2. All right, and so there's two possibilities here. You can take one of the uh, CH3Hs, or you can take one of the CH2Hs. All right, and so if I pick this one, I'm going to write a CH2 here, and then I'm going to show this H that I'm going to lasso with my CLCL, and so I have CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2 now, and now there's a CL there. And of course, you also have what is lassoed, your HCl, but that is not organic. So you're going to lasso something that doesn't have a carbon in it. And so we're, in organic chemistry, concerned with our organic product, not the inorganic product. All right, and so our longest carbon chain is four. You start at the end closest to the group. And so that would give you the lowest number, and that is a one fluoro butane. All right. But it said give one of the products, and it was plural, because you could have taken one off of the CH2. CH3, CH2, and I'm going to write CH, and then I'm going to write the bond to H that I'm going to lasso. All right. So, or you could take and lasso a CH2 H. And then that would give you a CH3, CH2, CH. That's bonded to a Cl, CH3. Now you have a 1, 2, 3, 4, a 2 chlorobutane. Plus HCl, but again, in organic chemistry, we're worried about the organic product. All right, so that's why it said a possible substitution reaction because there are two possible substitution reactions. So your alkanes, you can burn them and get CO2 in water, or you can do a substitution reaction uh, and get a different organic compound. All right, 35. What is the major product when HBr is added to methyl propene? What is the major product when HBr is added to methyl propane? Okay. All right. So methyl propane. All right. So the question that I was going to ask is why aren't they calling this A2 methyl propane? So 2-methyl, 1-propene is a bit of an overkill because once you have your propene, if you would put a methyl <clears throat> here, now it's not a propene. Now you have four carbons in a chain, so it can't go there. 
if you would have put a CH2 and then a CH3 here, again, now your longest carbon chain is four and you're no longer a propene. The only place that you could put the methyl is where it was placed. Uh, it was then here. So your longest carbon chain is still a three. And when you have a propene, it is always a one propene. Uh, if you would say two propene, well, that means you numbered it in the wrong direction. The only way to get a two propene is to number it the other way, which is not the lowest number. One is always the lowest number. And so since one is always the lowest number, they're not putting it. Uh, and since there's only one place that you can put a methyl, which is on the second carbon, otherwise you have four as your longest carbon chain, then they're not putting the two. So here, if you put the two and you put the one, I will not take off any points, but the reason why they're not putting it is because there's no other way you could do a propene with a methyl. All right, and so then the question is add HBr. So again, when you're adding HBr, you're doing a Markonikoff addition. H is going to go to the carbon of the double bond with the most H's. And so if we draw out the double bond, we see that the left side, that carbon has two H's. The right side, that carbon doesn't have any H's. All right, methyl is not three H's. Methyl is methyl. All right, and so your carbon here is attached to two H's. The carbon here is attached to zero H's. All right, so you gotta see that a methyl is not three H's. A methyl is a methyl. It has to be connected to H's in order to have bonds to H. All right, so when we add our HBr, it is gonna add where the H always goes to the carbon with the most H's and then the Br or the Cl or whatever else is there uh, is gonna go to the other side. And so you're gonna end up with CH3 when this H goes to that. And then here you're gonna have a C with a Br on it when the Br goes here. And this one still has a CH3 and another CH3. So when you name the product, one, two, three is the longest carbon chain. So that is a propane. Off of carbon two, you have a bromine and a methyl. And so you have to put it in alphabetical order. So you got to have the bromine first, two, bromo, two, methyl, propane, or the name of that product. So you have to know the Markonikoff rule. The H is going to go to the carbon of your double bond that is connected to the most H's. And the most H's that it could possibly be connected to is two, because carbon only has four bonds. The double bond is two of them. If it had two bonds to H's, that's the most H's you can have. All right? And the other side has no bonds to H's, because they're both bonded, both bonds are to methyl. All right, I'll give the major product. This is 2336. Okay, so we have CH3. Then we have a C. And then another CH3. Then that is double bonded. A CH. Into a CH3. Uh, this time we're going to add H, and then they show it as H and OH, and this one as H2SO4, which is on the arrow, which means it's a catalyst. They also list that, yes, that's a catalyst. But anytime you have something on the arrow of a reaction, uh, that is going to be your catalyst. So we have an alkene. You must know this because there's always questions on what kind of reactions do alkenes do? The answer is addition reactions. All right, and when you do these addition reactions, and in this case, one side is gonna get an H and the other side is gonna get the OH. The Markonikoff rule, you always have to know, the H goes to the side with the most H's. Again, H is H, OH is not H. OH is OH. Methyl is not H, not three of them, uh, it is methyl. H is H, OH is OH, CH3 is methyl. All right, so when you say that the H is gonna go to the carbon that has the most bonds to H's, all right, so this carbon has one bond to H, 
This carbon has zero bonds to H's. All right, and so your H is going to go to the one here on the right. So the H goes to the carbon with most H's, and then the other carbon gets the OH. And so when we do that, we have CH3, C, CH3. This side had the fewest H's. It gets the OH. This carbon had one H. It's going to get another H because it had one H versus zero H. And so now it is H2 and then a CH3. So it is a Markonikov addition of water. H goes to the side with the most H's. The OH goes to the other side. And when you name it, 4 is the longest carbon chain. You see that you have an alcohol. When you have an alcohol, you drop the E. You add OL. So 4 carbons. You have butane. But we're going to drop the E of butane and add OL. We have butanol. And we see that the OH is on carbon number two. So we have a two butanol. But we also see that on carbon two, we have a methyl. And so this is a two methyl, two butanol. Anytime we have an alcohol, we are going to be asked to label the alcohol as primary, secondary, or tertiary. Since the carbon connected to the OH is connected to three other carbons, this is a tertiary alcohol. All right, so you have to know that alkenes do addition reactions. And when you're adding something, uh, the H always goes to the side with the most H's. That is the Markovnikov's rule. 38. All right, so you're going to have a uh, compounds, and sometimes they will put them in a tricky order in order for you to name them correctly. You have to follow the rules. So this one is carbon, 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 and then a carbon going down, and then a carbon, and then a carbon going up, and then a carbon. All right, so it says to name this alkane. All right, you got to find the longest carbon chain, and you want the lowest number for the uh, substituted groups. And so I can obviously see that I have a substituted group further on the right. So I know that my longest carbon chain is always going to go from the end closest to your substituted group. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right, so the first group is off of carbon two. If we went the other way, the first group wouldn't be off until carbon three. All right, so five is a pentane. All right, so that takes care of the five carbons of the longest carbon chain. But we have a total of seven carbons in this structure. All right, and so to name them, we have to give their location. There is a two methyl. And off of three, there is also a methyl. We do not say 2-methyl, 3-methyl. We say 2-3-dimethyl pentane. So this is a 2-3-dimethyl pentane. All right, so there was no tricks on that one. No look like the, the only what you would call tricks is when the straight chain is not the longest carbon chain. That's sort of a trick, but that happens all the time. Make sure you have the longest carbon chain. So the next one has a carbon, a carbon, a carbon, and then a carbon, and this carbon goes up with two carbons, and it goes to the right with two carbons. All right, so again, this one has the same longest carbon chain, which is one, two, three, four, five, and six, because you could also have gone one, two, three, four, five, six. So either way, you would have six as your longest carbon chain. And so that is a hexane. And you see that off of carbon three, you have to know that a CH2, CH3, a two carbon group is ethyl. So this is a three ethyl hexane. Next one 
has a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. And now the fourth carbon goes down into a carbon and a carbon going in each direction. And then it keeps going with another carbon, another carbon, and another carbon. All right. So this one, it doesn't matter which end you start numbering from. It doesn't have a substituted group until carbon number four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is a heptane. And then you've got to know your alkyl groups. You have to know your ethyl, your methyl, your ethyl, your propyl, your isopropyl, your n-butyl, t-butyl, isobutyl, sec-butyl. Uh, you have to know those groups. And so if you do, then you recognize this one as an isopropyl. And so this is a four isopropyl heptane. So you have to know your alkyl groups. All right, now the last one. This is the ones that you will normally see to make sure you're following your rules. The rule isn't number from left to right. The number, the rule is longest carbon chain. So we have a C, we have a C, and then down here we have a C and a C, and then we're gonna keep going. There's another C and another C and another C, and then up from that one is a C, and then two more Cs. All right, so the usual suspect, whatever the usual uh, mistake is to go from left to right, and that's your longest carbon chain. Well, it actually would have worked for the first uh, one, two, three problems, but the fourth one, that does not work. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is not the longest carbon chain. All right, and so, and then if you tried number from left to right, right to left, actually in this case, it is the same. Uh, but if you go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, seven, yes, because that would give you eight. Eight is the longest carbon chain, not seven. And could you number it the other way? Of course you could. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can always number it in either direction. You have to go in the direction that gives you the lowest numbers possible. All right, so mainly it's the first number that we want the lowest as possible. But you see, in either direction, the first one that we get to is a three. So then you would go with the lowest second number. And again, it doesn't matter because the second number is six in both of them as well. And so it doesn't matter which way you number it. You've got a three methyl and you've got a six methyl. All right, eight is the longest carbon chain, so you have octane. And then you have a three comma six dash dimethyl octane. All right, so if that one you went straight across, you would have said you had a two ethyl and a one, two, three, four, five methyl uh, heptane. That is not the correct answer because the longest carbon chain is not seven. The longest carbon chain is eight. All right, 2340. Uh, write the condensed structural formula in each of the following. Uh, so 2,3-dimethyl pentane. All right, so pentane. I like to draw it this way. One, two, three, four, five. So a 2,2 two, two dimethyl pentane. That means off of carbon number, oh, good grief, I did it again. So off of carbon two, if it will ever let me write again, you have two methyls. Let's go with a new page. Not give me a new page. All right, let's see if enough tapping will go back to writing and not erasing. Yeah, well, it's now it's erasing. 
All right. So we need two methyls here. All right, so that is a line stick model. Now to write this, it would be uh, in a condensed structural formula, you got CH3. And this is about to shut down on me again. Uh, CH3, and you've got three of them connected to a C, which is then connected to a CH2. which is connected to another CH2, which is connected to a CH3. Yeah, this thing's gonna shut down real soon here. All right, so line stick model, I think is easier to deal with than a condensed structural formula. All right, so the hardest part sometimes of naming this is being patient enough to actually write it all out so you know that you have a 2,2-dimethyl uh, 2 -dimethyl pentane. All right, let's see if it'll go. All right, well, it'll keep erasing my record. All right, 2-ethyl, two 2-methyl two hexane. So hexane, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. 2-ethyl, one, two, so now I have an ethyl. And then a 2-methyl, then I have a hexane. All right, so that is uh, the wrong name for this compound because they're saying that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is your longest carbon chain. Well, that is not the longest carbon chain. The longest carbon chain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is a heptane. All right, and off of the heptane, you have off of number three, you've got a methyl and a methyl. So this is a three comma three dimethyl heptane. And I don't know why it keeps erasing everything, but it is. Three, three dimethyl heptane. Now to write that in a condensed structural formula, you've got CH3. Crazy. All right. Won't open a new page. Won't open a no. Won't open anything. All right. right here. Okay, all right, it'll right here. Okay. All right, so we are at this one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so it said hexane except one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is a three, three dimethyl. Heptane. All right, and so to write that as a condensed structural formula, you've got CH3, CH2, that's your CH3, that's your CH2. Now we have a C, and in parentheses, we have to put the two CH3s. In parentheses, CH3 sub 2. So that indicates that you're going to put two CH3s off of that carbon, and now you just go to your CH2, your CH2, your CH2, and your CH3. So CH2, 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 CH3. All right, and so that is the condensed structural formula 
of a 3,3-dimethylheptane or an incorrectly named 2-ethyl-2-methylhexane. All right, if we tried a 3-ethyl-2-methyloctane, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 carbons here, and off of carbon number 3, we have an ethyl, which is a 2-carbon group. Off of carbon 2 is a methyl, which is, of course, a 1-carbon group. All right, and so to do this, we would have... Off of this one, we have two CH3s. So when you have two CH3s, you would write a CH3 and then a sub 2. That takes care of this CH3 and this CH3. And then this is a CH. And this is also a CH. But this CH is connected to a CH2, CH3. So in parentheses, CH2, CH3, that means that this CH and off of that CH is an ethyl group. And then continuing down the line, you've got a CH2, one, two, three, four times, and then a CH3. So then you got CH2 and you have it four times, one, two, three, four. If you wanna do shorthand, you could then put it as a sub four, or you could write it out four times and then CH3, all right? So it is a good thing to do is to do that both ways um, because when you see it this way, it is very difficult to then put it into this form. So it's good to start with the easy form and put it into the um, molecular or the condensed structural formula because on a computer, this is how the structure is written, and you have to be able to go from this into this so that you can name it. All right, the last one in number 40 is a 3445-tetramethylheptane. So heptane, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven carbons, and off of carbon three, and then two of them off of carbon four, and then one of them off of carbon five, they are all methyls. And so to write the condensed structural formula, all right, on the left here, we got a CH3 that is then connected to a CH2, all right, so this is a CH3, this is a CH2. Uh, we're given carbon, all carbons have four bonds, this one already has three, and so we only need one H, so this is your CH, but that C is connected to a CH3. That's when you need parentheses, CH3. That means that CH, that is also connected to a CH3. Now up here, this carbon already has four bonds, so there's no H's on it, but it has two methyls. So in parentheses, CH3 sub 2. Right. And then down here, you've got your CH with a CH3. So to write that, you got to write CH and then in parentheses CH3. And then you have your CH2 and your CH3. Right. So again, you have to be able to go from... The way you're going to see it on the test is you're going to see it the way I've circled it. You're going to see it this way. And the question is going to be, give the name of that compound. So you have to convert it into a form that you can find your longest carbon chain and name it. All right, we will do more questions on chapter 23 next time.